Okay. All right, good afternoon. This is Rob Bell, and we are uh, on Getting the Record Straight, the uh, Black Rock and Soul segment. Welcome, everyone. I uh, hope you're staying cool. It is blazing out here in Philadelphia. And um, please subscribe, share, and like, do all that good stuff. As I said, this is Getting the Record Straight, Black Rock Soul segment. Have a wonderful guest on. As you can see, Brother Lamar Manson, a.k.a. Black Ice, uh, brilliant brother. Um, this is my first time meeting him, although I know his mom pretty well. Uh, a wonderful person, Linda. Lamar is from Philly. And let me just do a brief introduction, my brother, before I uh, let you start talking. Um, uh, Lamar began in 1993. As I said, he's known as stage name and recording name is Black Ice. He appeared on five consecutive seasons of Russell Simmons' Deaf Poetry Jam on HBO. Um, he also had a starring role in the Tony Award winning presentation by the same name, Deaf Poetry, on Broadway. Um, he's won uh, uh, Tony, a Peabody, and an Emmy appeared on several hip hop CDs, including Method Man's The Prequel and Pete Rock's Soul Survivor 2. He's collaborated with The Roots, Flowetry, Mary J. Blige. 2006, he debuted his own album, The Death of Willie Lynch. And I see you also did a remake in 2013 of The Revolution Will Not Be Televised. Um, so uh, Philadelphia, here's Lamar Manson. Welcome, Lamar, also hey, known as Black Ice. How you doing? I'm good, bro. How are you? I'm great, man. Um, like I said, um, you know, you're a poet. Uh, you've done music. You've done Broadway. How'd you get started with all this, um, you know, poetry and spoken word and all that good stuff? Well. Well, poetry, poetry, I've been, poetry, I've been uh, writing, uh, you know, since I can remember writing, you know, um, I had a, a, a few really dope teachers and a, and a, and a really, I have a, a really incredible mom when it comes to nurturing. So I was just very, you know, really fortunate to uh, have these teachers that kind of guided me along my process, uh, even when I didn't know it was a process. So. Uh, I was doing poetry for a minute, but I'm, you know, hip hop generation, you know, so I was an MC, you know, I did all things hip hop, you know, I danced, I, uh, I was an MC, I am an MC, you know, I'm gonna say I was, you know, I'm, I, I am an MC and at 16 years old, I, you know, me and my, my homies uh, were serious enough and put enough work in to where, you know, somebody found it viable enough and we put a record out it in 1988 which was not a small feat, you know, uh, in 88. And uh, you wind up opening up for like uh, Public Enemy and Stetsasonic and uh, the Tough Crew and Crown Rulers all the time. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so I've always been an artist, you know, always been a writer. Um, uh, spoken word specifically, uh, I got, well, I, mean, I was, I can't say I got introduced to it, because uh, my, my father and my mom, you know, I, I grew up with the last poets and Bill Scott Heron and the Watch Prophets and Oscar Brown Jr. and Mary Baraka and, you know, uh, Sonia Sanchez and Wanda Robinson and, you know, all of these folks. So I, I can't say that, oh, I was introduced to it at a certain age, but I was, I, 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 I was introduced to, introduced to the contemporary uh, uh, set, you know, somewhere around, 92 93 mm -hmm. uh and uh and it and it became a you know it just became a a, a part well well it, it it reignited a part of me that may have been uh dormant because at the time barbering was my art of uh of expression mm -hmm. you know so i've always you know and and so when my best friend took me to my my first spoken word set at, at uh at butter it was called buttermilk and it was at um um, it was at a uh, North Star Bar, 29th and Poplar. I know where that is, sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, now it's not North Star Bar. Well, I don't know if it's still North Star Bar, but 
it's not the North Star that it was <laughs> back in 93, 94, you know, and, uh, and yeah, and, and, and right then, that, that, I think that night I decided, you know, that night it reignited that part of me. So I think I went home and started, you know, started writing again, you know, uh, and, uh, and continued that part of my journey. And yeah, and, uh, and I just, you know, it was, it was a really dope way to get some things off my chest, uh, to express some things that, you know, uh, I was a barber, you know, barber in, in Germantown, you know, at a very popular barbershop. So, you know, I saw, you know, if you're a barber, you're on the cusp of black male America, you know, so, uh, uh, or, or male wherever you at, there's a, you know, if you're, if you're in a barbershop, you know, you're on that cusp. So, uh, mm -hmm. A lot of things I saw, you know, were beautiful. A lot of things not so beautiful. Uh, and now I had a place that I can go uh, and and express those things. You know, even I was always the barber who was debating and, you know, about certain things, uh, uh, you know, certain topics, you know, uh, political, sociopolitical, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, so now I had a spot that I could go to and I could, I could write, you know, I, I could write a piece that expressed my whole thought about it. And, and spit it out without getting, you know, without getting an argument back or without getting, you know, you know, so it, it was, uh, and it, it was performance, you know, so it was, mm -hmm. it was the reignition of all those uh, things, my performer side, uh, you know, my stage performance side, because even as a barber, I performed, it's quite a show, you know, so. Um, you uh, mentioned, I'm sorry, can I cut in for a second? Yeah, you mentioned, yeah. Uh, something about school and, and teachers. Where did you go uh, uh, to uh, school in Philly? Uh, I went to John B. Kelly Elementary mm -hmm. in, Germ in, in, in Germantown, in, in Hollow, uh, and, um, and then, or Pulaski Town, more or less. Uh, and then uh, I went to Amy Two, mm -hmm. uh, which was initially downtown at Broad mm -hmm. Race, and then we moved to. Uh, 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 North Philly, like around 13th and or, or 15th in, in, uh, in um, Susquehanna, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so that was, the, and then I went to, uh, I went to engineering science for a year, and then I went to Edison, uh, you know, but um, uh, John B. Kelly, I had a, a teacher named Miss Brooks, who uh, uh, fell in, you know, was loved our, me and my classmates so much that she decided to uh, kind of change grades every year and switch grades with us. And she, we had, I had, I kind of had the same classmates uh, from first through fifth, mm -hmm. but, uh, but we were very um, gifted. Everybody was, you know, every, and, and it's funny because everybody's turned out, you know, the majority of my classmates have turned out quite successful, mm -hmm. quite, con, you know, uh, you know, very impactful. Uh, and influential contributors to, you know, to just society. So, uh, and then when I got into Amy, I had a, a, a English teacher named Miss Stanton, who mm -hmm. uh, made me fall in love with diction and vernacular and vocabulary and mm -hmm. pronunciation. And then Miss English, my ninth grade English teacher at, uh, at engineering and science, uh, really stuck it to me with grammar mm -hmm. and punctuation. And uh, and they were like she was like quintessential black teacher named Doctor English, you know what I'm saying? You know, and and she demanded, you know, she demanded the best out of us, you know. So uh, yeah, and 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 then in in high school, when I went to, when I transferred to Edison, my English teacher, Mr. Daniels, demanded that kind of excellence. And then he um, we, you know, he also taught uh, African American history which was kind of a rare thing to be able to engage in in, 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 a, in a inner city high school, especially Edison. So mm -hmm. yeah, man, I just had these teachers that, uh, that really, uh, you know, that saw, you know, saw in me what I couldn't see in myself at times and, and, mm -hmm. and pushed me forward. And then I had a mom who wouldn't allow me not to see it, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so uh, yeah. And, and, uh, and, and that's really how it, uh, but I've been an artist all my life. It, it started, you know, but it definitely started barbershop. My, my best friend took me to a spot and we, uh, and I just you know, reignited that, that voice in me, that, that hand, you know, that pen in me that, that it had something to say. So I just started saying something, uh -huh. you know, and, uh, 
And at first it was a, you know, at first it was a, a, a kind of a thing to go and just get stuff off my chest. And then I saw, you know, you know, kind of quickly that I had, I was gaining some, uh, some, uh, gaining a little name, you know, gaining some popularity as, as far as one of the marquee uh, up, well, at that point, up and coming poets mm -hmm. of the city. Cause at that point I was, you know, you had Trapita Mason, who's the, who's the poet laureate of Philadelphia now, you know, you, you know, I looked up to Trapita Mason and Stephanie Renee and, um, uh, Wadud and Ursula Rucker and, sure. you know, uh, uh, the, and, and, and these cats, Sibela and these were the, the, these cats were, were, you know, uh, um, Glenn and they, they were, they were killing it, you know, and obviously Sony Sanchez and these, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Omar Tyree, who was not necessarily a poet, but he was a, a author, but you know, he did the dab here there. So these were the cats who I kind of uh, saw and 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 saw as peers and, and then began to kind of hone my thing. And uh, over the years, you know, I, I honed it in such a way and then took on the, the description Black Ice, you know, and, uh, and yeah, around 99, 2000, uh, I moved to New York and met Russell and you know, the whole thing uh, kind of went, went, you know, further on down the path. So, you know, but. You know, you talk so much about the uh, Philly scene. And um, I kind of, you know, was, well, I was really in the midst of raising a family. And uh, in fact, my son went to uh, ENS um, mm. in the mid 90s himself. And, um, um, one of the things when I finally started to kind of catch on to what was going on as a, as a, um, uh, you know, person who was viewing things as a fan, um, is just what I felt for some time that Philly just, I don't feel as a, as a, as a, as a city really nurtures the genius and artist that, that it has. And, um, uh, I just think it's been problematic. I'm just, I'm not talking mm -hmm. about from a, um, a community standpoint mm -hmm. and um, that kind of thing. But I, I think just we don't, the city doesn't get the credit it does for the brilliance and the genius that it, that it has. And, and well, I mean, I, I think. Um, you know what, though? We got to take a pause yeah, right now because yeah, we're going yeah. we're going to run out of time and we got a lot more to get to. So just hold okay. hold on for a minute. Yeah. Mm -hmm.